Hey guys, welcome into today's video. This is gonna be a brand new series on my channel. It's gonna be a foundation a day for 42 days. The reason that I wanted to start this video is that I have 51 foundations in my permanent collection. It's the number two item, maybe number one right now, of makeup that I really like testing. I'm really into testing new foundations. It switches back and forth usually between blush, eyeshadow, and foundation, my three favorite makeup categories, probably a lot of people's favorite makeup categories. But 51 foundations is just too much for me to have in my collection. I recently did did a makeup declutter and I will link that up in the cards where I went through my whole collection and I decluttered breaking some of my makeup into three different categories keep declutter and then I made up a third which was items that I want to keep for reference but I'm going to take out of my permanent collection and move into the closet where I keep makeup that I think is popular relevant things that I may want to reference in future videos but that I don't want to use in my personal everyday life but I did not do that with foundation and recently I've gone through a really big skin change in the last eight months to a year I have gone from really really dry skin to very very oily skin and a lot of foundations that used to work for me that were more on the dewy natural finish side just aren't working these days so I'm grabbing and loving more matte foundation so some of my foundations in my collection predate my skin change so the reason for this series I don't want to just declutter foundations based on memory I want to retest a lot of them because some of them are pretty expensive some of them I may re-love some of them I may not like or may not work for me now and it's time to make that determination so while I have 51 foundations in my collection this is foundation a day for 42 days because there are nine foundations I have already made a decision on. Some of them I'm actually testing. They haven't gone into speed reviews, but I've worn them very recently. So I know exactly how I feel about them, but I will have to move them into wherever they're going to go, keep declutter or in the reference pile. And then there are some that I'm testing that I already absolutely love. Haven't gone into a speed reviews and I know that I'm going to be keeping them. And then two of them, I have already made the decision that I'm going to declutter. Hello and welcome to day 21. If you guys have been following along with this series at all, you know that I am super excited to get to day 21 because that means we are at the halfway mark. Woo! So freaking excited. So on today's agenda, as you guys can see, is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus foundation that is in the dewy finish. So if you watch the intro to this video, you guys know that I used to have very dry skin. Now my skin is more combo oily, more combo in the drier months, like right now, and then more oily in the summer months. I know that it was all hormones that changed my skin type so drastically. There's just no other explanation to that other than hormonal change based on my age. So anyway, I haven't tested this, I don't think, since I've had combo oily skin. I really liked this because I felt like it was a buildable formula that always made my skin look smooth and very hydrated. I just don't know how it's gonna perform on me now. The reason that I picked this particular one to do for this day's wear test is for two reasons, actually three reasons. So one is because it is a little bit of an older foundation in my collection and I've talked about kind of targeting the older ones just so that I can get some use out of them if I'm going to. And then two is nobody has to see me today. So if this fades off of me, <laughs> that's okay. And then three, is that I'm pretty sure that this isn't going to stay because it's the dewy finish and if you watch any of my other videos or heard me talk about foundations at this particular point I'm just reaching for more soft matte mattifying longer lasting foundations and more full coverage to be honest so I don't think this is going to be a foundation that ends up staying and so far I've done a pretty good job in balancing out what stays and what goes I have decluttered more than I have kept at this point so what I have been doing since the beginning of this series is applying one side with a brush and one side with a sponge. Today I'm actually going to just use the brush. I've just been loving using a foundation brush to buff it into my skin lately and throughout these entire wear tests I've just been noticing the side that I'm using with the brush for whatever reason right now just seems to look a little bit more smooth on the skin so instead of me bouncing back and forth between the two I'm just going to use my preferred style today but let's get into with that very long-winded intro talking a little bit about this and then we'll jump into application so the foundation is called the photo focus foundation in the dewy version this is the one that comes with this strange paddle it's my foundation that I refer to as smelling like nail polish remover it has always smelled like this I don't hear anyone else describe it as smelling like nail polish remover but that's how I feel about it I'm taking all of the information of this foundation from the Wet n Wild website. So it's supposed to come in 20 shades. I have mine in the shade Shell Ivory, which is described for fair, neutral skin tones. This retails on their website for $6.89. It says it's a skin perfecting, pore diffusing foundation that has a buildable from medium to full coverage level with a dewy finish. It's ideal, obviously, for normal to dry skin types. It doesn't have quite one fluid ounce. It's 0.95 fluid ounces. It's made in Thailand. I cannot find the shelf life anywhere. 
but I imagine it's 12 months, just like most of them are at the very, very least. Yeah, the shelf life's not listed on the bottle. It wasn't under here, which is just the ingredients list, and I couldn't find it on the website, but I'm gonna guess that it is 12 months. I think you could probably buy a pump for this. Most of them, like, you can, but I was always just, like, taking the paddle and applying it directly to my cheeks. This is one of the foundations that um, is probably actually my skin tone or actually a really good match for my skin tone, unlike some of the other ones that I've been testing. The scent on this is so strong. I would love to hear in the comments, do you guys think it smells like nail polish remover? <laughs> like I've never heard anyone else describe it like that, but that's how it smells to me. We're gonna start with that much and I don't know, maybe build it from there. We'll see how much coverage this gives, can't remember. Like that was actually a lot of like foundation that I put on like I was definitely slathering it without much regard onto my face I mean it's dewy I mean you can see how dewy it is I actually really liked this foundation not for longevity but just for how like skin like it looked when it was on my skin when I had really dry skin I think it actually is like a really hydrating not just dewy foundation because sometimes they can be dewy and then that fades off really quickly I actually felt like it was a hydrating formula so I think that's an actual good distinction. What I do have to say about this is because it has so much radiance sitting on top, I do feel like it emphasizes my texture a little bit more. Not all dewy foundations do, but I think this one does. So I don't really think it's a skin perfecting, pore diffusing foundation the way that it says. So I think that's good. I think that's pretty. It applied like evenly. It looks pretty healthy on the skin. Let's go into the other side. Now it's starting to look a little bit more full coverage. For being a pretty dewy foundation, it's not like a tacky formula. So hopefully that helps because sometimes more dewy foundations, even the ones that don't claim to be, or the ones that have a little bit of radiance, I should say, not dewy foundations necessarily, radiant finish tend to be a little bit dewy feeling. And I don't feel like this one is. This one to me though, the amount of product I put on my face it's a heavier feeling foundation. Like some of them claim to be weightless and they are very, very lightweight even though they offer a good amount of coverage. I wanna say the more you build this one up, the heavier it feels on the face. I like this one, but just because I'm more oily, combo oily now, I don't think I'm gonna hold on to it if it ends up being a shorter wear time. I think that's really gonna be the tipping point for me is if it ends up fading off at the four to five hour mark, probably not something that I'm gonna keep because I'm just looking for longer lasting foundations. And I've held on to ones that have a little bit more of a dewy finish that I feel like don't emphasize as much texture as this one does, even what it's doing right now. Like, especially on my cheeks right here is where I see a ton of texture. Let me go finish the rest of my makeup, whole powder, concealer, all that great stuff. We'll do one final check-in and then I will go about the wear test. So I actually think the coverage level on this is a lot better than I remember it. Like it was definitely buildable. I probably applied more than I normally would have. Like back when I had dry skin, I think I went in with lighter layers of foundation. Now I tend to like just slather it on with oily skin because I feel like it just slips off so quickly if I don't or like sinks into my now much larger pores a lot quicker. So I think this is a really buildable formula. I, I think I got like pretty full coverage out of it actually. So I like the coverage level. I think that like after powdering, like obviously I took away a lot of the dewiness and so I feel like it got more smooth on the skin. I did use a cream blush today and I feel like it has like a tiny bit of radiance, but I don't think that that's the foundation poking through. I think I pretty much mattified it. Anyway, I'm gonna do a natural light check-in for you guys now. I'll do one again at four hours and then I will see you guys back here at the end of the night to decide how it held up and whether or not it stays or it goes. I'll see you guys then. Hello and welcome back to the exact eight hour mark. It held up a lot better than I thought it would. Let me show you the check-in in natural light. Looked pretty good. I actually don't think my skin looked super textured after I powdered like I told you guys. The thing that's lasting the longest at this point is 
the lip product, but let me go right into showing you guys what it looked at the four hour mark. It actually, again, held up really well. Very surprising how long it lasted, but we are here now at exactly the eight hour mark and I'm not overly dewy. I really didn't go outside much today, so I haven't sweat. I wasn't out in the humidity. It was pretty much indoors with the air conditioning on or off. Probably 72 degree temp, not bad. I don't think it was a bad wear. I actually was surprised this lasted as long as it did. I kept checking the mirror going, whoa, it's still pretty well intact. But the problem at this particular point is that it is separating where my oils are peeking through. And my oils will come through no matter what, but depending upon how the foundation breaks down is really gonna determine whether or not it's probably gonna be a product that works for me. So I don't know if you guys can see it, but like right here, it's like just breaking down the foundation and on my chin, it looks really heavy, just kind of creepy looking. It does not look good where my oils are breaking down the foundation. It's a foundation that's not really meant for people with oily skin, but I was surprised that it worked as well as it did, honestly, and the fact that I felt like it wasn't overly dewy for somebody who has oily skin. I honestly think it was really pretty and more full coverage than I thought it was going to be. I think it's a tremendously good foundation for somebody with dry skin. I even think it's probably pretty good for somebody who's got like normal, maybe even kind of combo skin. The thing is, I just don't think it works very well for people with oily skin. And if it was a foundation that didn't last that long on me because of my oily skin, it would be fine. I just, I really don't care for the way that it's breaking down because that's always noticeable. And when it breaks down like that, it's hard to like powder over it. It just kind of looks cakey, really, when you're layering like a powder on top of a foundation that's now separated because your oils are breaking through. Halfway through the day in the wear test, I actually thought I was gonna hold on to this. I thought, oh, this is surprising. I always make the wrong call when it comes to like, am I gonna keep it or am I not gonna keep it? But I am not going to keep this foundation. I am going to declutter it. I just, I think it's really good though. Just like overall, this is a foundation I would definitely recommend to people with dry to normal skin. Um, the only thing I would say is like, be wary of the really intense smell. So I am going to declutter this one again for the age and just cause I don't think it works for my particular skin type anymore, but it's still a good foundation. We are on day 21. That makes my new tally. I have decluttered 12 and I have kept nine. So I feel pretty good about that. I have definitely done my work in decluttering more than I have kept and I feel really good about it because it's getting to the point where I'm really excited that I'm doing these wear tests because I'm really finding foundations that actually look really beautiful on me instead of just jumping around to the foundations that I have to try and get use out of every single one of them, but don't really remember how they wear. And especially because again, some of these are pricier items and my skin has changed because of my hormones. I just noticed that I'm getting like this freaking zit right here. Like it's been so long since I've had acne. I just, I'm like, please, just would you not? That would be great. <laughs> Side note, anyway. But yeah, the hormonal change definitely like has taken me through a loop in trying to figure out like what now works for me instead of trying to remember. But this has been fun. I was getting a little burnt out in the beginning of doing these. I think my excitement to do this series has been renewed. I hope you guys are enjoying. I hope you find these videos helpful. I hope that you stick around for days 22 through 42 of Foundation a Day. I'm out of here and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Bye guys. 